All right. Welcome again to everybody that's on our team call today. We're so glad you're here. This is the right place to be at the top of the hour, Monday through Thursday. We have great training and today is no different. We have on Thursdays the opportunity to, to learn from Christian Sadler. And I just don't think they come any finer. Um, I started with some uh, positive thoughts and affirmations at the about 10 minutes before the hour and some uplifting music. And uh, the first one, the first thought today was if you fell yesterday, stand up today. Uh, and you know, here, here's a guy as great as Christian is, he'll be, be the first to tell you. He, he, he'll never tell you he's always been able to be successful the first time around. He's taken a few falls, but he stands up, and that's what makes him so awesome. He, he overcomes the challenges in life. He faces it with a smile. Look at the gleam in his eye. So, yeah, we have our hard times. We have bad days, but let's stand up the next day and make it great. And uh, the best thing we can do is make the best of who we are. And, and certainly Christian epitomizes that. Uh, he is just one of the best people I know. And, and he hasn't come from, you know, he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth and come from a, a trust fund family. Um, he, he has built a life the way he wanted it to be. And, and it, he is just so excited to reach out and help us. And he's here this morning. Christian, we're so glad you're with us. How is everything going? Really good, Ron. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, grateful for you. You know, all those kind words that you said and everything that, uh, that you said was true. Um, as far as, you know, I wasn't born with a, a silver spoon, so to speak. And uh, uh, I'm grateful for that, actually. I'm really grateful for all the opportunities of growth that I've been able to have um, within my life and, uh, and continually in this business. And, you know, uh, I often say, that everybody pays their dues somewhere. And so some people come into this business and they just take off. And I'll tell you what, those people paid their dues somewhere. And there's other people like myself that I've paid all my dues right here in uh, Renatus and with Bob Snyder and his education um, that he's created. And I'm, I'm grateful for all the ups and the downs. And I'm grateful for the people that I've met along the way. And Ron, you're one of those that I'm super grateful for. I'm honored to, uh, to serve side by side with you as a volunteer and uh, can to continue to make these calls amazing. Um, you know, what you've done to, uh, to really take on these morning calls uh, and continue to do, I believe is impacting uh, many, many people across the country. So folks, I wanted to start off uh, with a little bit of a story. So before I get into the training, and, and I, I guess I shouldn't say before because it really relates um, to the training, um, but I want you guys to just come with me a little bit, and you'll understand when we, when we get a little further along. But a long time ago, there was, uh, there was a village, and uh, in order to get some of the supplies that they needed, there was a river that needed to be crossed to the village that was across the river. And you know, when, uh, when, you know, one boy got old enough that he could venture off on his own, they would, they would send him out to go get supplies. And one day he came back and he said, you know, the bridge is down. Uh, there's no way to get the supplies. So what they did was they assigned that task to somebody stronger. So because he could not uh, cross the river, he, they sent somebody who was uh, in his teenage years. And uh, this boy was strong, and, and uh, he went and, and crossed the river. He found, he found a way. He found that there was, you know, rocks that were, you know, sticking out of the river that he could easily cross. And he noticed something. When he first got to the river, he noticed uh, one of the, uh, the oldest, wisest, and strongest men of the village was there at the river just looking. And... He didn't pay much attention to it because obviously they were uh, backed up in time and he needed to get the supplies. And so he went across the river and came back and, and to much glory and much people, you know, many people celebrated him for his ability to, to get there and back. But he noticed something when he's on, when he was on his way back, the old man was, uh, 
was picking up the pieces of the bridge. And the next time that, that, uh, that the supplies were needed, they sent this, this boy again, this teenage boy, strong and fast. And sure enough, he was able to cross the river easily. But the thing that he noticed when he went to cross the river is that old man was still there at the bridge. In fact, he, was, uh, he had been gathering supplies. He'd been cutting down trees. He'd been, uh, you know, bringing rope. And uh, the boy didn't understand. And so he went, went along his way, though. He needed to get his supplies because, of course, that's where he got praised. He got celebrated because he had been able to, you know, get those things that were needed. And uh, it wasn't very much longer before he needed to go on another trip. And as he went on this next trip to get the supplies that he needed and that the, that the village uh, was needing, he came to the river and he noticed that the old man was, was still building this bridge. He was, he was actually reconstruct, reconstructing this bridge. Now he looked and he knew and he, he saw this old man and he thought to himself, I mean, this guy is so strong and so wise, I don't get it. I'm, e I'm able to easily cross this bridge. I know that he could do it as well. I got to figure out what's going on here. So on his way back, he went and he talked to the old man. And he said, old man, I, I don't understand. I've been able to make multiple trips. I've been able to get the supplies that were needed for the, uh, for the village. And you, as the biggest and strongest and wisest, sit here reconstructing this bridge. Tell me why. Why would you do that when, if I can cross it, I know that you can cross this bridge as well. And the old man just looks at him and he sits down and he says, well, well, my boy, you see, this bridge was washed out by the high waters and the high waters are gonna come again. And there's women and children that are gonna soon need to cross this bridge to get to where we need to go. And so I don't build this bridge for me. I build this bridge for them. Now, the first time that I heard a version of this story, it was actually by um, one of my late mentors, Chad Wade, um, rest in peace. And, you know, I often looked at what he did. This guy was making over a million dollars a year um, just referring the education um, that we worked with in Bob Snyder's previous company. And I would see him sacrifice his time and, and build out trainings. And, and uh, I mean, every morning I would see him, you know, get up and go out and do, he called it the buns of steel workout where he would go put out flyers and he would do phone calls where he was, uh, um, uh, where he was letting us listen in as he was making phone calls to his prospects. And I often thought to myself, why would a guy that could stop today and continue to make over a million dollars a year, I think, you know, up around his, his peak was like 1.8, 1.9 million dollars, somewhere around there. So he could have stopped and, and continued on overrides to make over a million dollars a year. And when he told this story, I got it. Because he said, you know, he relates to that old man, that he's not building this for himself anymore. He's building it for the people that come behind him. And, you know, this was early in my career that I heard this. And I, it, it helped me to look and think beyond myself. And I want you guys to think about your business right now. Who are you? If you think about the characters of the story, are you um, the young boy that once, you know, the tools aren't given to you, you turn back? Or are you the, uh, the stronger boy? Are you the one that finds a way across the river, but doesn't really think about the people that, are, that, that you're working with? That doesn't really think about building a bridge behind you or are you that older and wiser man that not only you know crosses and gets the supplies but also creates a path
for the people coming behind you. You know, I, I, uh, I think about how many times in this business that I have literally taken myself to the last dollar just to continue to keep things running, to continue to keep the, you know, the systems in place and the weekly presentations, you know, moving forward. I've had a lot of ups and downs in this business. And oftentimes to the sacrifice of my own greater good. But in reality, I, I've known that it is, in fact, for my greater good. Because without the team that's coming behind me, this thing doesn't continue. This village doesn't live, so to speak. And I didn't come here to do this alone. You know what? When I first came and learned about this opportunity, sure, there was a lot of reasons that were, I guess, self-serving, right? I wanted to make more money. I wanted to have more freedom. Um, you know, I wanted to have a better lifestyle. I wanted things and stuff and cars and, you know, all those things. But I would have to dare guess that like many of you that are on the line, that quickly changed. Because as I got involved in this community, I started having people that believed in me more than I believed in myself. And sometimes, in my opinion, um, maybe maybe uh, unfoundedly, right? There were times in the beginning of this business, especially where I just couldn't figure it out. Not that I couldn't figure out what to do. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't doing it. I couldn't figure out what it was that was causing me to procrastinate. I couldn't figure why, you know, I didn't have the energy that I used to have. And through all of that, because I continued to show up, and every time I did show up, I had community members, I had people that were part of this team that looked at me like a champion, that talked to me like I mattered. And so very quickly, the goals became something bigger than just me. Because quite frankly, doing this business just for myself and just for my own goals wasn't enough motivation sometimes to even get me out of bed. But when I started thinking outside of myself and started realizing that I could build a bridge, in fact, I could simply point people to the bridges that had been already built by the people before me, that was a big motivator for me. I remember when, uh, you know, the very first person that I introduced Renatus um, did their first real estate deal and how they were thanking me as if it was my fault. I was so young in the business, I couldn't do anything for them. In fact, I wasn't even there when they, uh, when they first enrolled. <laughs> so I had, I had simply put out the ad, answered the message, and they showed up to where I directed them. They walked across the bridge themselves. They did the real estate deal. And somehow they were thanking me. And that's when this business really started to turn into something bigger than just my own financial freedom, than just my own goals and dreams and desires. And, uh, Real estate is obviously why I came here in the first place. And it still is one of my greatest passions, right? I love real estate and uh, I will always be a real estate investor. I will always have transactions going. I will always continue to build my portfolio of properties. But now with Renatus, there is something beyond myself. And the reason that I signed up to take on 
you know, the, uh, the, you know, the financial responsibility of the entire Salt Lake City marketplace was because I know that I have the opportunity to affect people that I may never even realize we were in the same room, right? I know that if I show up always ready to give a presentation, there's going to be that time where I step on that stage and I point, I point out something that gives that brand new person the opportunity to see a better path, to see the bridge that's before them. And there's no greater feeling than when I get somebody that comes to me and they thank me when I don't even realize what I did. When I, I, I didn't consciously go out and affect their life, it just so happened that by running this business, by continuing to serve this community, I'm impacting people beyond myself. So my message for you this morning is you've got to become strong yourself first, right? You have to put yourself on the higher plane before you're able to lift anybody else up to that higher plane as well. And from the very beginning, you guys have the opportunity to build bridges for the generations beyond you, for the people that you haven't even met yet. And I wonder if you're thinking about it from that perspective, because as I said before, when I was doing this business just for myself, that wasn't enough motivation for my subconscious mind to get up and do the work. And so if you're in a place right now where maybe you find yourself procrastinating, I mean, we've all been there, right? Where you set aside the time. You even set aside, you know, a, a space where you cannot be bothered. And you sit down at that, uh, at that desk, paralyzed. And pretty soon, those, that hour or two hours or three hours or four hours or some of you, you know, you've set aside an entire day. Oh, hold on. Sorry. People coming off me. All right. You set aside an entire day. And then as you sit down, you start thinking to yourself, you know, I really should probably uh, organize this place and just make it, make it feel a little better for me. And then by the time you're done with that, you say, oh, I should probably organize these leads and I should probably choose who to call first. And, uh, and, and you start organizing those and then you say, well, you know, I should, really, I should really pull out my script and maybe go through my script a couple of times and, and just get prepared that way. And oh, I, you know, I haven't eaten yet today. I, I'm, I'm not gonna do any good. If I, uh, if I haven't eaten, I mean, I'm hungry and I'm probably not going to be in the right mindset. And, uh, you know, let me just go ahead and eat. And uh, while I'm eating, let me go ahead and, uh, and make a phone call. And, uh, oh my gosh, you know, I already watched episode 15 and episode 16 is about to come on. So let me just, uh, I'm just going to quickly, you know, that one episode, it's not going to take all that much time away from my day. And so I'm going to watch that and then I'm going to go, go back there and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to call my leads and, uh, oh geez, you know what? Gosh, I didn't even realize that this show was on too. I mean, let me, let me do that. Oh, I just got a phone call from the kids and, uh, you know, Hey, let me just, I mean, I got to cherish that, uh, that time that I have with them. And then pretty soon the whole day's gone, right? You've been there now. Maybe it's not the same excuses, but it's something else. I would dare guess that you haven't created a why that is big enough that your subconscious mind is willing to do the work. Because if all you're doing is 
trading your effort and you haven't set goals big enough, then your motivation is going to be lacking. So here's my um, assignment to you guys. I want you to take the next uh, 10 minutes, the 10 minutes that we would be on this call anyways, and I want you to really dive into what your why is. And journal it on a piece of paper, if possible. And what I want you to do is I want you to just start writing. Don't even worry about what comes out, right? You, you know what your intention and your focus is, which is finding your why and figuring out something bigger than yourself that you can focus on in order to create results. And then I just want you to write. Whatever comes into your head, it doesn't matter, just write. 10 minutes straight. And at the end of the 10 minutes, go back and look at what you've written. And find something in that that can push you to the next level, that can cause you to go out there and get the results and build the bridges because there's people coming behind you that need you. And that's what this business is all about.